to start the day with a tidy cafe. <laughs> no sign of Ben yet, though. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. <laughs> Ben's not here at the moment, but he won't be long. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, ben could not make it today. He is a bit busy, so he has asked me to take his place. My name is Pierre-Francois. Uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at his face. I'm sure I've seen him before. <laughs> hey, why are you staring at my face? You make me all shy. I'm sure I recognize him. Hang on. That's not Pierre. That's Ben. Hey, Ben, we know it's you. <laughs> oh, you saw through my clever disguise. I thought I could fool you. Well, your coat's different and so is your hair. <laughs> And your eyeglass makes you look really distinguished. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> In fact, your voice is very different. The only thing is, your face looks exactly the same. But I've been invited to a party where everybody has to dress in disguise. A disguise is when you change the way you look, so your friends don't know who you are. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? My disguise isn't very good. Don't worry, Ben. We'll find something. We'll have to worry about my disguise later, Small. Sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way! Woohoo! Way! Who's in our cafe today, Small? Well, we've got three customers in our cafe today, Ben. Three? Wowee! <laughs> what do they look like? Well, there's a little one. A medium-sized one and a big one. Oh, give us another clue. They're very furry. <laughs> I'll guess in a minute. And they have horns coming out of their heads. <laughs> oh, I know who they are. They're the three Billy Goats Gruff. You're right. The three Billy Goats Gruff. Now, I wonder what Billy Goats would like to eat. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. One day I was out for a walk in the countryside when I met three billy goats. A big billy goat, a medium-sized billy goat, and a little billy goat. Hello, they bleated. We're the three billy goats gruff. The billy goats were very hungry, so I shared my packed lunch with them. We don't have enough grass to eat in this field, said the little billy goat gruff. I looked at the field on the other side of the bridge, and the grass was very green. Well, why don't you cross over? I asked. We can't, said the medium-sized billy goat. There's a nasty troll living under the bridge. He's going to gobble us up. I'm sure he wouldn't do that, I said. Come on. We started to trip, 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 trap over the bridge. But sure enough, the nasty troll appeared. Who dares to trip, trip, trap across my bridge? He bellowed. How am I supposed to get rid of my headache with all this trip, trap, trip, trapping? So that's why he's so angry, I thought. He's a troll with a sore head. Then I had an idea. I found some of the softest moss and I made mossy slippers for the little billy goat. Mossy slippers for the medium-sized billy goat and mossy slippers for the big billy goat. Oh yes, and I made a pair of mossy slippers for myself too. <laughs> Wearing our mossy slippers, we pad pad padded across the bridge and the troll didn't hear a thing. The goats were so pleased to be in the lush green field that they made the troll a pair of goat's wool earmuffs so that he'd never, ever be disturbed by trip-trip trapping. Little Cook to the rescue once again! 
That was a great adventure. So the three billy goats gruff feasted on tasty green grass thanks to your brilliant idea, little cook. But what can we cook for three billy goats? That's a good question, Ben. Ooh. I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Ooh, let's see! Aha! I found just the thing to remind the three billy goats gruff of their adventure. A baguette bridge. That's trip trap tremendous. <laughs> you read out the ingredients, little cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need onions. Onions, over we go. Here we are. One onions, two onions, yep. A baguette. And what's a baguette? A long bread roll. Like this. Oh, oil. Here we go. Got the oil small. Sugar. Got it. Cider vinegar. Oh, yes. Here we are. That's in the cupboard as well. Yep. Cress. Here we go. Got the cress mall. And goat's cheese. Goat's cheese. Oh, right. OK. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe. But I'm afraid we don't have any goat cheese small. Oh, no. But don't worry. Why don't you whiz off and get some and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. <laughs> Hey, why don't you come along too? Whoosh! Go, Small! Go, Small! Whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> oh, look! They're goats! And that goat is being milked. <laughs> this is the dairy where the goat's milk is made into cheese. That's an ingredient that turns the milk into curds and whey. Now the milk has been turned into curds and whey, it has to be cut up into little pieces using a special cutter. The way is drained away. We don't need that anymore. <laughs> the curd is used to make the cheese. It's collected into moulds and put under a press until it is set. The cheese is taken out of its mould and put in a storeroom. Yummy, yummy! I'd better get back to the kitchen with some goat's cheese. Bye! <laughs> Hey, I found the perfect disguise. Blip, 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 blip. I'm an alien. Merk, merk, blip, 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 blip. I'm an alien. I'm back. Why are you hiding behind that colander, Ben? <laughs> it's my clever disguise. I'm an alien. <laughs> no time for that now, Ben. I've brought back the goat's cheese. Woohoo! Whoa! Ho -ho! Good work, Small. That was amazing. Goat's cheese is made from goat's milk, you know. The goats were really pretty and they had beards. <laughs> oh, I bet it's all lovely and creamy. Come on then, Small, let's get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates gold, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to baguette bridge? 
You do. There were onions, two, thinly sliced, a baguette, one, cut into three, two short pieces and one long piece, oil, two tablespoons, sugar, one tablespoon, cider vinegar, three tablespoons, cress, a little for decoration, and goat cheese, five slices. Whoopee! Let's get started! Now, the first thing we need to do is turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark six. And remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. So that's a job for your grown-up helper to do. And so is this. I've heated the oil in a medium saucepan until it's nice and hot. Then, I'm going to pour in the onions and give them a good stir until the onions are coated in the oil. Mmm! I love the smell of yummy onions while they're cooking. I wonder if I can think up a clever disguise for Ben with this greaseproof paper. When the onions are golden, it's time to add the vinegar. There we go. Slip, slop. And then we can add the sugar. Plip, plop. Give it a good old stir. Like this. And then we can cook them for another ten minutes until they're really golden. The crinkly crublet has landed. Throw down your spoons. I come in peace. <laughs> Is that you, Small? Yes, Ben. I'm trying to find you the perfect disguise. The only trouble is, I'm stuck. Can you try to unwind me? OK, here goes. <laughs> Thanks for thinking up the crinkly crublet disguise for me, Small, but it looks a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, let's see if these onions are ready. Don't worry, Ben. I'll find you a disguise. Mmm. These look just right now. So, I'm going to turn off the heat and then bring them across. There we go. And next, I'm going to take the two short pieces of baguette, which I've cut the ends off like this, and pop them onto a baking tray. We can eat the other bits later. And then, I'm going to take the long piece of baguette, which I've cut in half, like this, and I'm going to place that on the baking tray as well. And on top of that, I'm going to put the onions. And some more there. And next is the fun part. On go the slices of goat's cheese. Some there. And there. And another one there. And then another piece on there. Ho, 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 this looks yummy, Small. <laughs> Ha-ha, I'm a knight in shining armour and I'm ready to joust. <laughs> ah, what are you up to now, Small? Hey, hey, I'm trying out another disguise, Ben. I'm being a knight in shining armour. Now stand aside, my horse is ready to charge. <laughs> are you all right, Small? Yes. <laughs> I don't think I want to be a knight in shining armour. It looks a bit dangerous. Right. Let's get on with our baguette bridge. Now, we can pop it in the oven. So, oven gloves on. And over we go. And remember, this is a job for your grown-up helper to do because the oven is hot, hot, hot. Open it up. And... In it goes for 10 minutes. I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. The cheese is melted now. But it doesn't really look like a bridge, Ben. It soon will. 
It's cool enough to touch, so I'm going to arrange the pieces of baguette on a plate like this in the shape of a bridge. There we go. And then I'm going to sprinkle some cress around the plate as a grassy riverbank. Wowee! That looks brilliant! Quick, Ben, let's give it to the three billy goats gruff while it's still nice and warm. OK, then. One baguette bridge coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits and bobs The things that help us do our job Ingredients we'll put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while All around, up and down We've got the cleanest cafe in town Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes! And it looks like the Billy Goats Gruff enjoyed the baguette bridge. Look, Small, they've left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? <laughs> it says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you for the yumptious baguette bridge. Woohoo! We are enjoying our new field very much. Here are Small's mossy shoes that we left by the bridge in case the troll isn't wearing his earmuffs when Small visits us again. Whoopee! My little mossy shoes! I knew I'd left them somewhere. <laughs> oh, hang on, Small, there's more. Here's something to help with Ben's disguise. Big bleats from the three billy goats gruff. Ho, ho! <laughs> Look, Small! Hey, hey! It's a goatee beard! <laughs> Let's put it on with the rest of the disguise. I can't wait for the party now. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> How do I look? Like a right silly Billy. <laughs> but I wouldn't recognise you now, Ben. Now I've got the perfect disguise. <laughs> See, See you soon. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. <laughs> I'm just giving our cactus plants a little drink. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> you have to be very careful with cactus plants as they're very prickly. And lots of cactus plants grow in the desert where it's very, very hot. Phew, a great big sun, no clouds in the sky. No one about except my cactus and I. <laughs> And me! Hoo -hoo. I'm here too, partner! Hello, everyone! What are you doing, Ben? Ho -ho. I'm a cowboy, Small. Cowboys sometimes ride around in the desert. Do they? Oh, yes, partner! Why do you keep calling me partner? <laughs> Cowboys do that too, Small. They say, uh, how you doing, partner? And pass the beans, partner. And things like that. Oh, I want to be a cowboy too. Can I be a cowboy? 
Partner? You surely can, partner. Just hop on your horse like this and ride around like me. Yeehaw! Yippee yay! Yippee yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Why have you stopped? Cowboy hat small. We can't be proper cowboys unless we've got cowboy hats. You're right, Ben. <laughs> oh, we can't worry about that now, small. Sounds like we've got a customer. I'm on my way, partner. Who's our customer today, partner? She's got a check shirt, jeans, and a horse outside. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's Casey the cowgirl. Well done, Ben. I think it's time to look in my book. <laughs> We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. I was at the big cowboy show with my friend Casey the cowgirl and her horse Star. She was going to enter a competition to round up some buffalo. We were really excited. But then something happened. Oh dear, one of Star's shoes has fallen off. I can't let Star into the competition without his horseshoe. Then I had an idea. Come with me. And we hurried off to see my friend the blacksmith. A blacksmith is someone who fits iron shoes on horses' hooves to stop their feet getting hurt. Don't worry, Casey, he said. I'll make a new one. Soon he had the fire going and was hammering away until he'd made a lovely shiny new horseshoe. We had to stand in a safe place as the fire was hot, hot, hot. <laughs> the blacksmith soon fitted the new horseshoe, but we didn't know what to do with the old one. Then I had a brilliant idea. Horseshoes are supposed to bring good luck. So I fixed the old one to Star's saddle. Casey was really pleased. Then off we went to the competition. We were just in time. Yee-haw! yelled Casey. And Star ran like the wind. I really had to hang on. Casey was so good at rounding up the buffalo that she won the competition. Whoopee! That horseshoe really must have been lucky. <laughs> Three cheers for Casey, yelled the judges. And they gave her a prize. A lovely star badge to wear on her hat. And three cheers for Star, the fastest horse in the West. <laughs> and don't forget, three cheers for Little Cook Small and his lucky horseshoe. Little Cook to the rescue once again. <laughs> that was a great adventure. Wow, fancy rounding up all those buffalo. Casey is a clever cowgirl. Way! And Star's a very fast horse. And the lucky horseshoe was a great idea, too. I wish we had that lucky horseshoe right now. Why? Because it might help us think of what to cook for Casey. Hmm. Ooh. <sighs> I know, Big Cook's Big Cookery Book. Of course, the Big Cookery Book. There's recipes for everything in there. And where do we look for things to cook? In the book. In the book, in Big Cook's book. Here we are, Star Bean Burger. Made with buffalo cheese. Ooh, just the thing after a hard day herding buffaloes, partner. <laughs> Yeehaw, partner. Oh, perfect. Come on then, little cook. You read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need onion. Onion, over we go. Got the onion small. Garlic. Garlic, yep, that's here as well. Got it. Carrot. Over here, yep, carrots. Kidney beans. Kidney beans, got those, yep. Curry powder. In the cupboard as well, lovely curry powder, yep. Oil. Here we go, got the oil small. Flour. Oh, that's here as well, in the cupboard, got the flour, yep. Cherry tomatoes. Lovely red juicy cherry tomatoes, got them. And buffalo mozzarella cheese. Eh? Buffalo Ooh. mozzarella cheese. Well, here we are. There's everything else for the recipe. Now, I've heard of buffaloes and I've heard of cheese, but I've never heard of buffalo mozzarella cheese. 
Well, why don't I whiz off and get some and find out how it's made? I think you better add, little cook, and I'll get everything ready. See you later. Woohoo! Hey, why don't you come along too? Whoosh! Go, small, go, small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. Oh, this is beautiful. Hello there. Look at those horns. These animals are called buffaloes. And they're off to the milking parlour to be milked. This is the milking parlour. And this is the farmer. He's attaching some suction pipes to the buffalo's udders. The milk is sucked from the buffalo and collected. It's going to be used to make a cheese called mozzarella. The farmer adds an ingredient that turns the milk into curds and whey. Look! The milk has turned into curds and whey. The whey is the runny stuff and we don't need that. The curd is the lumpy bits. We use the curd to make the cheese. <laughs> Look at the curd! It's turned all stringy and stretchy. The curd has turned into cheese. It's a soft white cheese. It's called mozzarella. The cheese is divided into small ball-shaped pieces and stored in some water until it's packed. Now the cheese is packed and weighed and ready to go to the shops. That was great! See you later! Yeah! Woohoo! Hey! Steady there, boy! <laughs> yeah! Hey! I'm back! Hello there, Small. Did you get the cheese? Oh, yes. And here it is. <coughs> Woo! Hey, hey, that's great. Buffalo cheese is made from buffalo's milk. And buffaloes are really big with big horns. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that sounds great, little cook. But we'd better get cooking. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. Jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Star Bean Burger? You do. There was onion, one, chopped, garlic, one clove, chopped, carrot, one, finely grated, kidney beans, 225 gram tin, drained, curry powder, one teaspoon, oil, two tablespoons, flour, two tablespoons, cherry tomatoes, one, cut in half, and buffalo mozzarella cheese, two slices. Whoopee! Let's get started! I'm going to turn on the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, gas mark 6. And that's a job for your grown-up helper to do, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. Now we can start on our bean burgers. So the first thing we need to do is mash up the kidney beans. You can do that for me, Small, while I fry the onions. Hey! Mashing, smashing! You can mash with a masher or a fork. I'm going to use a fork. Hoo -hoo. Mash, mash, mash! Hey, hey, smashing, mashing, small. Now I've started to heat the oil in a frying pan and I'm going to add the onions and the garlic and fry them for a couple of minutes. 
And this is another grown-up helper job. Are those beans ready yet, Small? Yep, partner! Hey, hey, thank you, partner. Wow, a very good job. Mmm, the smell of frying onions. It makes me think about being a cowboy, sitting around the campfire and waiting for my dinner. Into the pan goes the carrot, the mashed up bean. Oh, quite sticky. Let's get it all in. There we are. The curry powder and the flour. And give it all a good old stir. Stir and stir and stir! Until it's all mixed up together. Now we have to let this cool down before the next bit, so pop it there. Turn off the heat, and now I'm going to make a cowboy hat. Hey! So to do this, you need a plain piece of paper or card. Fold it in half, like this, and then draw the shape of half a cowboy hat, like this. Hey! I wish I had a cowboy hat. Oh, me too, Small. Now, we can cut out the shape. Yee-haw! We go and open it. That's brilliant! A proper cowboy's hat. But you can't wear it. No, 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 Small. This is for the recipe. And just to finish it off, I'm going to draw a band across it, like this. There we go. And then I can pop it on a plate, ready for a star bean burger. Hey, I've had an idea. <laughs> what are you up to, Small? <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> The mixture's cooled down now, so we can carry on with the recipe. I've placed a star-shaped cutter onto a greased baking tray, and I'm going to spoon in the mixture. Like this, until the star is full. Perfect! Yee-haw! <laughs> Carefully press down with a spoon and then we can gently remove the cutter. There! A star! Now we need to pop it into the oven for 10 minutes. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. On there, open it up, and pop it in. And remember, that's a job for your grown-up helper to do, because the oven is hot, hot, hot. I'll set the timer for ten minutes. There we go. Oh, it smells lovely. Yee-haw! Do you like my hat, Ben? It's great, Small. <laughs> Right, now, ask your grown-up helper to put two slices of buffalo mozzarella cheese onto your bean burger. But you can use any cheese you like. Like this. And then pop it back into the oven until the cheese has melted. So, oven gloves on. And back into the oven it goes. Yeah! Ah, I'm a cowboy and a cowboy calf. Woo! Oh, you're a good cowboy, Small. I wish I had a hat. I'll make you one, Ben, whilst the cheese melts. The cheese has melted now, and I've placed the bean burger onto the cowboy hat. And just to finish it off, I'm going to put half of the cherry tomato on there, like that. 
And there we have it. One cowboy hat with a cowboy badge. Hey! How's my hat coming along, Small? It's ready, Ben. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Small. <laughs> I think it's a bit too tiny for me, little cook. <laughs> oh, I so wanted my very own cowboy hat. But never mind. We better get this through to Casey. One star bean burger coming through. There. All done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben and my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our jobs. Ingredients we'll put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile. We'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh, yes! And it looks like Casey enjoyed her star bean burger. Look, Small, she's left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, My star bean burger was delicious! <laughs> yee -haw! To say thank you, here's my cowboy hat for Ben. I <laughs> hope it fits. From Casey the Cowgirl. Wow, Small! Look! Ho! Oh, it's my very own cowboy hat! Yeehaw! Let's hit the trails, partners! Ho oh, ho! See you soon, partners! See you soon, partners! Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Big cook, little cook, we'll cook for everyone! Do, 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 do. Oh! Hello! Welcome to our cafe! The best cafe in the world! <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? That funny noise? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Ben, what have you got on? Are you going swimming? Swimming? What? This is for swimming. Oh, no. I found all this stuff in the dressing up box. <laughs> I was trying to dress up like a monster. <laughs> but I'm not going swimming, no. Why? What's wrong with swimming? Oh, well, I'm afraid of the water. I can't swim. I'm scared I might sink. Oh, don't worry, Ben. I'll teach you to swim. It's fun. Uh, well, the thing is, I think I've got something really important to do later, Small. We've got a customer. Well, we'd better get cooking, but I'm not going to forget about your swimming lesson. I'm on my way. Woohoo! Who's in our cafe today, Small? I'll give you a clue. She's got two flippers and she's very good at swimming. Not a dolphin? No, Ben. She didn't swim here. She walked. Two flippers to swim, but she walked here? It's a little penguin. It's Penny the penguin. Hello, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's hungry. Yes, she is a little bit hungry, but that squawk also means she's thirsty. Now I'm even more confused. I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's Adventures in the Big World. Let me see. Oh, yes. My holiday to the very cold South Pole. Boo! The first thing I saw when I got there was a really unusual looking bird. She was all brown and fluffy with little short wings. And she didn't hop like a bird. She sort of ran. I asked her what kind of bird she was, but she didn't know. All she knew was her name, Penny. She said she couldn't even fly, and she was very lonely because there were no other birds like her anywhere. First I helped by making a little net 
and catching Penny some fish for her dinner. Then it started snowing and poor little Penny was cold, so I looked in my holiday suitcase and found my spare coat. She wasn't hungry or cold anymore, but she was still lonely, so we set off across the ice to see if we could find Penny's friends. We searched for weeks and weeks and Penny was growing bigger and bigger, but we still couldn't find any birds that looked like Penny. Then, one day, we came across lots and lots of beautiful king penguins. It wasn't until Penny took off her coat that she realised she had grown up. She was a king penguin too! Then it dawned on me. When I first met Penny, she had been a baby penguin. That's why her feathers had been brown and fluffy. The other penguins were very proud of her. They taught her how to fish so she wasn't hungry. She had grown up feathers so she wasn't cold anymore. And with all her new friends, she definitely wasn't lonely. Little Cook to the Rescue once again! That was a great adventure. What an amazing story. And it's given me a really good idea. Way! What's that, Ben? Why, fish, of course. Well, we haven't got any, Ben. Oh, haven't we? But penguins eat fish all the time. I think it would be really nice to cook something else for her. OK. What, though? Hmm. I don't know. I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Look at this one, Ben! Iceberg Slosh! Penny the Penguin will feel right at home! There are loads of icebergs where penguins live! Iceberg Slush it is, then. Come on, Small, you read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need fruit. OK, over we go. In the fridge. Fruit, strawberries, raspberries. Orange juice. Orange juice. Got it. Lemonade. Oh, lovely fizzy lemonade, yeah. Lemon. Over in the fruit bowl. Got the lemon. Sugar. Yep, sugar. And water. I can get that from the tap. There we are. Everything we need for the recipe. It's called iceberg slush, but where do we get the ice from? We made that ourselves in the freezer, Ben. Oh, yeah, silly me. I've just remembered something. Did you know you can make models out of ice? They're called sculptures. Really? How do you do that? I don't know. Hey, why don't you whiz off and find out, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. I'll be back in a jiffy. Woohoo! Hey, why don't you come along too? Vroom! Go, Small, go, Small, whiz away. I wonder what he'll see today. It's really cold here. Oh, no wonder it's cold. That's a big block of ice. Ice is made from water that has been put into a freezer. Because it's so cold in the freezer, the water turns into ice. Ooh, he's going to use his tools to turn the ice into a shape. Can you guess what it's going to be? It's got a head and a beak. Oh, that tool is being used to mark its wing. I think it's going to be a bird that lives in the cold. Can you guess? The bird needs to have two eyes. That's one. And that's two.
Oh, look, it's a penguin. A penguin that lives in the cold. Oh, I'd better get back to the warm cafe. Way! <laughs> I'm back. Hello there. Did you see the ice being carved? I certainly did. It was fantastic. First they froze some water into a big block of ice and then they carved it into a shape of a penguin, just like Penny. Sounds amazing. Did you bring some ice back for me? Yes, I did, Ben. Now, where is it? I put it in my pocket. Mm. Oh. Oh, what? Here it is. But that's just a handkerchief, Small. Yes, but... The ice has melted, Ben. Oh, never mind, Small. Let's make some iceberg slush for Penny the Penguin. Let's get cooking! We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go. Princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to iceberg slush? You do? There were strawberries. Three. Chopped. Raspberries. A handful. Orange juice. One cup. Lemonade. One cup. Lemon. A quarter. Sugar. Two tablespoons. And water. Plenty of water for our ice cubes. Whoopee! Let's get started! For this recipe, we don't need the cooker. We do all our cooking in the freezer. Yes, instead of cooking, we're freezing. <laughs> hey, we'll need two ice cube trays. Here we are. Oh, look small. This one's still got an ice cube in it. <laughs> oh, careful, Ben. Oh, <laughs> sorry, small. <laughs> now, into one of these ice cube trays, I'm going to pour the orange juice. And I've already put it from the cup into a small jug to make it easier to pour. So... In we go. All the way along. And pop them straight into the freezer. Over we go. There we are. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you because the freezer is cold, cold, cold. <laughs> Soon, We'll have orange juice ice cubes. What do you think of that, Small? That was great! Uh, oh! Now, in this next ice cube tray, I'm going to start to make the fruit ice cubes. So, I'll put the raspberries along here. In they go. Very nice. Oh, this is going to be very fruity. There we go. That should do. And I'll put the strawberries along the other side. Nice and chopped up, so I can put a few in each. There we go. Wow! And that one. Great. And then we can top them up with the water. So the same again. Fill them up all the way along. Brilliant! And then straight into the freezer with these as well. This ice cube's really slidy. Ooh, 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 ho, ho. Uh. Whilst we're waiting for the ice cubes to freeze, we can prepare the cup. So, I'm going to take the lemon and wipe it all the way around the rim of this cup. There it goes. All the way around to make it all wet and sticky. That's very good. And then we can take the sugar and pour it out onto a plate. 
There it is. Great. Then we can turn the cup upside down and dip the rim into the sugar. Give it a bit of a twist. And hey presto, it sticks. Clever or what small? <laughs> I'm a penguin. <laughs> I wonder if the ice cubes are ready yet. They take a while to freeze. Hmm. Oh, I know. I'll pretend to be asleep so that the water thinks it's frozen. <laughs> Good idea, Small. Here goes. <laughs> Is it morning yet? OK, Freezer. We've been asleep for ages now. The ice cubes must be ready. <laughs> hey! There we are. Absolutely perfect. Wow, that's amazing, Ben. <laughs> it's just a little trick, Small. Huh? I put some in the freezer earlier whilst you were watching the ice sculptures so that they'd be ready in time. <laughs> OK, I'll let you off then. But I'm not going to let you off your swimming lesson, Ben. It was only a bit of fun. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the iceberg slush. In fact, this is the slushy part. I'm going to tip all of the orange juice ice cubes into a plastic jug or something else that won't break. So, in we go. Be very careful. There we go. And this is the fun part. I'm going to slush them up with the end of this rolling pin. Ooh. Give them a good old slush. Penguins like ice. They must be great at skating. <coughs> Woohoo! <coughs> there. That's the orange all slushy. Now we can put it into the cup. So I'm going to scoop it in with a spoon. That's one. And a little more, I think. There we go. And next, it's time for our fruity ice cubes. So, I'm going to take one strawberry and, I think, one raspberry. Yeah. There we go. And finally, we can top it off with the lovely fizzy lemonade. <laughs> now, I need to be careful not to spill it here, so I'm going to put it into a plastic jug. There we go. This should make it easier to pour. So, let's top it up now. In goes the lemonade. This is looking great. Perfect. And I'd like to finish it off with an umbrella and a straw. And if you want to, you can pop some orange on there. I love oranges. And hey presto, iceberg slush. What do you think, Small? That looks great, Ben. Let's get it off to Penny the Penguin before it melts. One iceberg slush coming through. There. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam My name's Ben And my name's Small We've got the cleanest kitchen of all Tidy all the bits and bobs The things that help us do our jobs Ingredients we'll put away Ready for use another day Pots and pans will start to smell If we don't wash them really well And now it's clear, let's all smile We'll be finished in a little while Aha! Here comes the plate! Oh yes! And look small! There's a note! Oh, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, My iceberg slush was delicious! Woohoo! Here's a present to say thank you. They helped me learn to swim, 
Maybe they'll help you too. They're swimming armbands, Ben. Now I'm looking forward to my swimming lesson. I won't sink in these. <laughs> I'll swim just like a penguin. Come on, small. Let's go. <laughs> See you soon. Hey. See you soon. Hey. Big cook, little cook. We'll cook for everyone. Ooh, new shoes, new shoes. Look at my brand new shoes. Oh, there we are. Be beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm all soaked. It's raining. Oh, dear. Oh, hello. Welcome to our cafe. The best cafe in the world. Just the place to come on a rainy day like today. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, what do you think? I think you should take your shoes off the counter, Ben. You never, ever, ever put shoes on the kitchen worktop. It'll go dirty. No, they won't, Small. Not today. These are my brand new squiggy clean sandals. Perfect for walking along the beach. Which is where I'm off to right now. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Today is not the day to go to the beach with new sandals. They'll get ruined. Oh, I was really looking forward to standing on the sand and listening to the sea. Whoosh, whoosh. Mm. Oh, come on, Ben, cheer up. Hey, why don't we play a game before our first customer arrives? That might take your mind off the sea. It might. Mm. What game to play? Oh, I know. We'll play a game called Which Shoes. It's a guessing game. It's brilliant. Okay, I'll go first. Um, I'm a runner, and I run, run, run. Which shoes do I wear to have fun, fun, fun? Well... Which shoes do runners wear? Oh, right. I, I, I guess do I. Oh, right. Um, OK, which shoes do runners wear? Which shoes do runners wear? Uh, do you know? Shout out the answer for me. Go on. Oh, I know, I know. Runners wear trainers. Right, first time, Ben. <laughs> right, OK, my go, my go. Um, right, yeah. I'm a dancer and I twizzle around on my twinkle toes. <laughs> Which shoes do I need? Who knows? Who knows? Hmm. Do you know? Oh, I do. It's ballet shoes. Yeah, ballet shoes. I couldn't really wear these to the beach, could I? <laughs> oh, come on, small. Sounds like we've got a customer. Oh. I'm on my way. Who is it today, Small? Well, she's wearing blue and she's carrying a bucket and spade. And what shoes is she wearing? Blue trainers. Oh, I know who it is, I know. It's little Betty Blue. She's here on holiday. You're right. Little Betty Blue lost a holiday shoe. What should Betty do? Give her another, just like the other, and then she can walk out in two. <laughs> so now we've got to decide what to cook for Little Betty Blue. I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Little Betty and I were at the beach together yesterday. It was a lovely sunny day and Little Betty was wearing a pair of brand new shoes. I thought they looked so comfy. Will you take one off, Little Betty? I asked. It looks just the right size for me to sit in. And it was. She held me up in the air. It was just like being in an aeroplane. She cried as she whizzed me round and round above her head. And we laughed and laughed. A family of crabs were watching. They all shouted, Can we have a go? But we were having too much fun to pay any attention. Then little Betty decided that we should build a sandcastle. So I got out of the shoe and started to help her. With one shoe on and one shoe off, Little Betty Blue filled her bucket with sand and we built the castle higher and higher. When the castle was finished, she put a beautiful little flag on the very top. 
there, she said, a castle fit for a little cook. But then she looked round and gasped. Her shoe had disappeared. Oh, not again, she wailed. I'm always losing my holiday shoe. But I had an idea where it might have gone. And I was right. The crabs were having their turn. This is just like being in a car, they cried. Broom, broom, or a brand new house. And they laughed and laughed. Little Betty really needed her shoe back, so I had to come up with one of my best ideas ever. I looked down the beach and saw the perfect thing. A big shell. The crabs were happy to swap the shoe for the shell. They got inside it and pretended it was a train, then a rocket and a boat. This is fun, they cried, and they laughed and laughed. Thanks, little cook small. Our new shell is such fun, they called, and Betty and I made our way home. Betty was so happy to have her shoe back, and she said she'd never lose it again. Little cook to the rescue once again! That was a great adventure. And Betty got her shoe back all because you had a brilliant idea, Small. Oh, well done, you. Wow! Well, thank you very much, Ben. So now you need to have a brilliant idea for what we can make for Little Betty Blue. Oh, yes. Another brilliant idea for Little Betty Blue. Hmm. Ooh. Ah. Oh! I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Woohoo! Oh, yes! Have I found the perfect thing or what? It's something to remind little Betty of all the fun she had at the seaside. Veggie sandcastles. Yippee! Well, you read out the ingredients, little cook, and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need an onion. Onion in the fridge. Over we go. One onion. Got that. A pepper. One pepper in there as well. Got that too, small. Frozen peas. Frozen peas in the freezer. There we are. Frozen peas, yep. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric. That turns the sand yellow. OK. So, turmeric to turn the sand yellow, but what are we going to use for sand, small? Long grain rice. Long grain rice, OK. And tomatoes. Tomatoes. Uh, we haven't got any tomatoes, Small. Oh, no. Don't worry, Small. We've got all the other ingredients. Hey, why don't you whisk off and find some? Oh, yes, of course. <sighs> hey, why don't you come along too? Off we go! Small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. There's a train! Choo choo! Oh, looks like I'm in the right place. Gosh, that's the biggest greenhouse I've ever seen. Let's go inside and see what's growing in the greenhouse. Come on. Oh, do you know what they are? They're tomatoes. And look, this man is picking them. The tomato plant grows out of the soil. And hundreds of tomatoes grow on its vines. When the tomatoes are young, they're green. And then they turn bright red when they're ready to eat. Ooh, lovely red, juicy tomatoes. These tomatoes are being grown in a greenhouse because it's nice and hot and the warmth helps the tomatoes to grow. Ooh, it's too hot in here for me. I'd better dash. Oh, 
Oh, if only I could have gone to the beach. The waves lapping at the shore. Whoosh, whoosh. The sound of the sea. Whoosh, whoosh. Whee! I'm back! You can't dream about the sea now, Ben. I've got the tomatoes! Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Hoo! Wow! They're so lovely and red. I saw this man who was picking them. They grow on plants, you know. Lovely. Let's cook. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go. Princess pea pies. Carrot cakes and fruity smiles. And envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. Big cook and he is small. Friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, all clean, clean and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to veggie sandcastles? You do. There was an onion, half chopped. A pepper, half sliced. Frozen peas, half a cup. Turmeric, one teaspoon. Long grain rice, 150 grams. And tomatoes, four chopped. Whoopee, let's get started. Right, Ben, you get going on the recipe while I make the flag for the top of the sandcastle. Now, I've heated some olive oil in a saucepan. Make sure you get your grown-up helper to do that for you. Shall I do it red or blue, Ben? Red. No, blue. No, both. Both! Now, put the onions... ...peppers... And the turmeric into the saucepan. And give it a good stir for about five minutes. Shall I do it in stripes or spots, Ben? Uh, stripes. No, spots. No, do both. Stripes and spots. OK, so it's red and blue, stripes and spots. OK. This looks pretty good. Time to add the rice. And the tomatoes. And just enough water to cover them. And then we bring them to the boil. Ben! Ben, I've just had an idea! Why don't I draw a picture of little Bessie Blue in the middle of the flag? Oh, yes, Mole. That is a brilliant idea. Oh, I'm full of them today, aren't I? So it's red and blue, stripes and spots, with a picture of Little Betty Blue in the middle. Here goes! Aha! There we are. It's boiling now, so turn it down. And let it cook slowly for 15 minutes until the rice is soft. Pop the lid on. And now we have to do some waiting. Hmm. I'll set the timer. <laughs> oh, yes, it looks just right. There we go. Now, here's a little tip for you. If it looks a little bit dry, you can always put a little bit more water in. Now it's time to add the peas. Giving it a good stir. There we go. How's your flag coming, Small? Coming along, Ben. I've done the stripes, see, and the spots. Now all I've got to do is put Little Bessie Blue in the middle. Good. Because our veggie sandcastles will be ready very soon. There we are. Turn the heat down. 
Now, I've greased a beaker with a little butter and I'm going to spoon in the mixture. There we go. A little more. Very nice. Press it down firmly with your spoon and then leave it to cool for five minutes. Little Betty Blue is ready. And here's the best bit. I'm going to place the plate on top of the beaker, like that, and very carefully turn them over. There we go. And slowly remove the beaker. There we are. Ta-da! Oh, very nice. What do you think of that, Small? Fantastic! And it's about to get even better. I've stuck my flag on a straw so that you can put it in the middle of the sandcastle. I think of everything, don't I? As I said before, you're brilliant, Small. Quick, Ben, get it off to Bessie Blue now whilst it's still nice and warm. OK, then, here we go. One veggie sandcastle coming through. There. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean. Make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. All around, up and down, we've got the cleanest cafe in town. Ah, here comes the plate. And she's left us a beautiful shell and a note, a postcard. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see. It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, Thank you so very much for my delicious veggie sandcastle. It reminded me of all the fun I had with Little Cook Small on the beach. Woohoo! But because Big Cook couldn't come and missed out on all the fun, I'm giving him this shell. If you hold it up to your ear, you can hear something very special. Oh, Ben! Ben, isn't that kind? Well, what can you hear? Whoosh! Whoosh! Oh, Small, you'll never guess. I can hear the sea. Oh, so now I don't have to go to the beach in the rain after all. I can stay right here. Whoosh! Whoosh! See you soon! See you soon! Welcome to our cafe. Big cook, little cook. We'll cook forever.